The question of whether there is, or once was, microbial life on Mars has taken a dramatic turn, with a chemical discovery announced yesterday at Jezero Crater and the Perseverance rover stationed there. Jezero Crater was specifically chosen as the landing and operations site of Perseverance because the crater shows significant evidence from orbit of the action of liquid water in the crater about 3 to 3.5 billion years ago. It was basically a lake and river environment when Mars was wet, and as is always said about life, follow the water. And that has been NASA's strategy since the 1980s, and now it may have just paid off. In fact, this new finding is a solid contender for the closest we have yet come to discovering life on another world. So the finding comes from a sample the rover took in a dry riverbed inside Jezero Crater. The sample, which is known as Sapphire Canyon, was taken in July of last year from a rock formation nicknamed Sheeva Falls. The overall formation of the sample is from a group of rock outcrops known as Bright Angel in an area of Jezero known as Neretva Vallis, which is a dry river valley about 400 meters wide. The formations in question are sedimentary rock, clay, and silt. Sediments laid down by water that hardened into stone, like what happens here on Earth with similar rock. But that is also the type of rock where you find fossils and can look for evidence of past life. Sealing that these rocks were once very wet for a very long time are calcium phosphate. That's caused by water. And there's also hematite. The sediments contain organic carbon, sulfur, iron oxide, and phosphorus, all elements used by life. That got the researchers involved with the mission's attention, because the formations had the basics needed for microbial metabolism. In a paper by Joel Hurowitz and colleagues, link in the description below to the Nature paper, which actually spent a year in review as the team wanted to be absolutely certain about this, they note that while it's the food of microbes, the elements did not represent evidence of life, so they looked further. While they were studying the arrow-shaped rock, Sheava Falls, they took a core sample, and it sported colored spots of unknown origin. That sample is Sapphire Canyon. These spots, known as the leopard spots, and a second type, known as poppy seeds, are thought to have formed in reactions involving the hematite and that provides free energy sources for microbial life. Similar things happen on Earth, and life is involved. High-resolution imaging showed that there was a pattern to the deposited minerals that appeared to be arranged in what was known as reaction fronts. This is where the point of contact, as it were, or the edge, where the chemical and physical reactions involving the minerals and elements happen. Within these spots, they detected two key minerals. Vivianite, which is iron phosphate that's hydrated, and Grigite, which is iron sulfide. Vivianite is well known on Earth. You find it where something decomposes, and also in the fossil record where something decayed. It's even found in peat bogs. In the case of Grigite, it is a known chemical produced by some microorganisms on Earth as well. These really do appear based on the evidence to have formed in reactions between the surrounding material and organic material. And here on Earth, life does this. It's simple life essentially mining the surroundings for usable materials to grow and produce energy. But as is so often the case in astrobiology, nature can make Vivianite and Grigite without life. So this is not an open and shut case. In fact, nature has a number of ways to do it. Most notably, at high temperature, it can form, also very acidic conditions, or various pathways in organic chemistry that are not alive. However, those other pathways leave telltale markers, and that's where this gets interesting. So the rocks at Bright Angel show no evidence of high heat or acidity, nor do the carbon compounds present in the rocks seem to have the right configuration to do the chemistry, especially at low temperature. That still needs some exploration and thought, which is the next step after publication in Nature. Other scientists will take a look and try to come up with ways that could happen. And the history of searching for life at Mars screams one thing. 
Tantalizing evidence often ends up called into question as more thought is put into it within the scientific community. Two good examples of this are the Viking life-finding experiments. They returned positives for active metabolism in the Martian soil, but it was later found that there might have been ways to produce those detections without life. That was never conclusively shown to be the case in the experiments. And in fact, more recent work suggests that adding water to the experiment might have actually hindered microbial metabolism instead of helping it through drowning it. But this was also the case with the Allen Hills 84001 meteorite, which has chemical signatures and structures that look like something microbial life would do. But they were also very much smaller than similar structures in earth rocks created by life. Almost too small for life to be reasonably viable. But not impossible, just different. So discoveries are often met with refutations in the world of trying to determine if Mars was ever alive. That may well happen with this new finding as well, only time will tell. And there's something else rather odd here. These sedimentary rocks are actually the youngest of their type Perseverance has studied at Mars so far. The finding actually goes against predictions that ancient life on Mars, if it had been there, would have been confined to only older rock formations due to Mars effectively going through the process of dying. This suggests that Mars was habitable significantly longer in its history than we thought. There is also a question of whether older rocks are simply buried or otherwise difficult to detect at that site. Given that this paper is published and announced by NASA, it's actually a case where as of right now, the simplest answer for the features is that microbial life did it. The abiotic options are actually less likely here. If the finding holds, it introduces a host of questions. The first is, where did that life come from? Was it indigenous to Mars as a second abiogenesis event in the solar system? If so, then this would be evidence of alien life. And if life appeared in the same star system twice, totally independently, then the universe must be teeming with microbes. Or was a transfer of life between Earth and Mars, or vice versa through panspermia? If that's the case, we will need to try to figure out which planet was the origin. We may end up being Martians. Or we will at least have proof of concept for lithopanspermia. And can imagine it happens all over the universe, and life is a phenomenon that spreads. Those would become the next questions, but there's a bigger one. There is currently talk about sending humans to Mars on multiple fronts, including plans by the US, China, and privately by SpaceX. And if we're going to do that, we really need to establish ahead of time whether there is anything still alive there at Mars, for both safety reasons and also to not contaminate Mars with a large amount of our own microbes, before we get a chance to study the ones that may already be there and probably not a great idea to bring anything back without precautions. And to that, the Perseverance rover is unique in that it was designed from the start to support a future sample return mission. This means that so long as a sample return mission is devised and implemented to get the samples Perseverance has collected, which there are now about 28 different samples sitting in the sample depot on the rover, and it all works, that means the Sapphire Canyon sample may at some point be brought to Earth for much more intense and in-depth study than what can be done on the surface of Mars robotically. That in principle, if all of this continues to hold up, could mean that we are one sample return mission away from the unambiguous detection of at least past life on Mars. And this could happen in the coming years nearer term if a mission is devised to fast-track the samples back, the proper protocols on how to isolate them, and so on. And again, it seems prudent to do this before putting human boots on Mars. For now, Perseverance continues to study the area around where the sample was collected to get a greater profile of it. So far, the environment this rock formed in was variable according to the evidence. The crater saw wetter times and violent periods of water movement, but also calm periods when it became basically a placid lake. Another interesting aspect of this is that these rock formations are actually from a period that is not well represented on Earth. Here, most of that is subducted or weathered away, but on Mars it's preserved and may tell us things about early Earth. 
and what things were like here, as well as Mars from the rover missions. But I leave you with this, one thing is clear. The Sapphire Canyon sample is now the most interesting rock we've ever found on Mars. Thanks for listening, I'm Futurist and Science Fiction author John Michael Godier, currently pondering the Sapphire Canyon sample. It may seem interesting, but think about it from the rock's perspective. It's all fun and games sitting around on Mars until the alien microbes invade and start eating you. Horrifying Mars. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.